I would like to talk to you about neuromorphic computing, so brain-inspired computing, how, how computers can compute like the brain. Not artificial neural networks, that we know, but very different how brains compute. But before I do that, let me talk about computers. So you know computers, right? You, you have computers. You probably have seven, eight, ten computers. Your, your mobile phone is a computer. Your car is a computer. You have a TV at home. That's a computer today. These computers compute. We know that. They use bits. They use binary numbers, zeros and ones. They do additions. They do multiplications. We know that very well. That's not how our brain computes. There's no addition, there's no subtraction in our brain. There is not even memory, there's not even storage like a hard disk in our brain. Our brain works very differently. Our brain works on spikes, on events, on, on messages that are communicated from one neuron to the next. I'll talk a bit more about how we transfer these ideas into computers, into our technology a little later. For now, let's look at the computers a bit more. We are so used to computers everywhere. There are smart devices, they are around us, they help us, that we don't realize they come for a cost. And with that cost, I don't mean preliminary the dollars or the Swedish crowns attached to it when we buy them, when we build them, when we set them up. There is an energy budget for these computers that we are largely unaware of. When we train large networks, large AI machines, we know there is a price tag. There are estimates that training ChatGPT once costs about $1 million. So we cannot train our own ChatGPT. That, that's impossible. Not to think of the costs for society, the energy bill that we have to food. It's not sustainable to train many, many of these large systems. In the long run, it's not sustainable to have all these computers with us that run on today's energy budget. And the reason why they are so costly in energy is because they operate on these bits and they compute over and over and over again, even when they don't really have to compute anything. They change bits all the time and that's using up energy. Let's go back to the brain. The brain is very different. The neurons in the brain, they only accumulate incoming information when there is new information. They only use energy when there is a new pulse, a new spike coming in. And they also only send out a spike, send out very rarely when there is new information to share with the other neurons, when there is something to communicate. So that's a concept called spiking neural networks. We've known these for, for some time, for decades, in brains, and there's Beginning, we're beginning to use such in technology today, to use such energy-efficient spiking computing systems. So I want to talk a bit more about these computers and this type of computation and how this does the same things on a significantly lower energy budget. But before we go to computers, again, let's look at something else. Let's look at cameras today, at you know, vision sensors. We are so used to cameras everywhere. There, there are tens of cameras in this room. There are cameras in your mobile phone. There are cameras everywhere. We are so used to them that we think we also have cameras in our head, in our eyes. But if our eyes were to work like cameras, our brain would explode for this overload of information that's incoming. Our eyes work very different to how cameras work. A camera takes an image, sends this image off, takes the next image, sends it off. Image, sending, image, sending, and so on. There's a lot of redundant information. You can compare this to a story. There, there's a medieval, just imagine you're a medieval knight, you have a castle, you want to protect your castle. So you send a guard out at the main door and ask the guard to observe the environment and tell you what's going on. So now if this guard works like a camera, it says, tree, there's a tree, there's a tree, there's a river, there's a river, there's a river. It just repeats what it sees over and over and over again. We think that's stupid. This guard should only warn us when something relevant happens, when there is you know, an, a foreign army coming in, or somebody, some friendly visitor. 
But that's exactly how cameras work today. They take an image and send this image, and they take the next image and send the image off. And somebody else, the computer, has to process that image with a lot of redundant information over and over and over again. So we really should go away from this technology. And there is a new camera type, a new model, inspired by how the eye works, where each receptor, each sensitive element, only reacts on changes. When it's getting brighter or darker in the environment, that sensor element sends a message, a spike out, so that we can process what's going on, what change has happened. That's exactly how our brain responds to visual input. When there is something jumping at us, when there's something moving, my brain can react immediately, and we can process what's going on. And if nothing, if no new information comes in, if nothing has changed, our brain knows nothing has changed, the world is still as before. So it's a significantly uh, easier way to process an amount of information. That's a, a computer vision technology that has been developed that provides these updates, these spikes, similar to spiking neural network computation. And now we go back to the computing ideas. So now we have a proper input where we only get updates, messages, events, when something has happened in the world. We can run a spiking network that receives these spikes and only updates, changes its behavior, its activity, when something has happened. So we can implement this spiking network and process vision information. If we run the spiking network on traditional hardware, we're in the same problem that we compute everything over and over again. So we also need different hardware. But we need the duality, we need to develop new algorithms that process incoming information, that process based on spikes. And at the same time, we need new hardware, new computing chips that process efficiently only those neurons, those computing elements that have been updated. And that's the field of neuromorphic computing that I started out with initially. So it's this co-development of new computing hardware, new computing substrates, it's a different computing principles inside the chip. We want these neurons that sleep, that rest, that wait for signals to come in, rather than process over and over again. And at the same time, a development of new algorithms that we can only update information when there is novel information coming in. And, and we develop such systems so that we have smart intelligence everywhere around us. We can put such systems together into low energy, mobile, potentially mobile devices that can guide us in every day's tasks. It could be wearables on us, it could be wearables on the face, glasses or similar. It could be mobile robotics, it could be devices that guide us that need a significantly lower energy budget compared to what today's technology requires to be smart. So I believe there will be significantly more smart devices with very new technology around us very soon. Thank you very much for today.